So if you enter sine 30 into a calculator, you'll get 0 0.5. If you enter sine 150 into the calculator, you'll also get another 0 0.5. Now sine 210 degrees gives you a 0 0.5, except this time it's going to be negative. And sine 330 does the same thing. We get another negative 0 0.5. You can go past 360 degrees and you'll get more 0 0.5s. And we can even go to the negatives here. We can go sine negative 30, and that will also be another negative 0 0.5. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use this diagram here at the top right to find out when we get positive and negative results like this. We're also going to use these triangles here. These are the exact ratios triangles that we learned about earlier. And you can see here, for instance, sine 30. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be 1 over 2. So that's where you get your half from. So we'll start with the top right diagram. Here we have the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. Now the A that you can see here, that means that all is positive in this quadrant. So you can see the quadrant starts at 0 and it goes through to 90 degrees. So here we've got sine 30. Now 30 exists in that first quadrant there, and it was a positive result. Now all positive means that sine, cos, or tan in this area between 0 and 90 degrees will be positive. Now the second quadrant has an S. That means sine is positive here. Sine is positive. So you can see here we've got 150 degrees. Now 150 is between 90 and 180. That's quadrant 2. And we can see we got a positive result when we did that. So anything between 90 and 180 for sine will be positive. But if you enter cos or tan values here, what you're going to find is you get a negative result. 180 to 270, you can see we have a T there. You can probably guess what that is. Tan is positive here. And you can see what's occurring here is we have sine 210. That's in this third quadrant. And what was our answer? It was negative. And we have sine 330 here. What happens over here for C? That's cos is positive. And sine 330 was here. And we found that that was a negative result. Now you can see here when we had sine 30, we simply used this triangle here to find out what sine 30 is. We had 1 over 2. That's our half. But here we've got sine 150. And if you go back to the triangles, there is no 150 degree triangle that we can use. Same with 210 or 330. So what we're going to do is find out a way to represent these angles here using these two triangles. So sine 150, let's start with that one. Where is sine 150? Well, the first thing you do is you find out where 150 degrees is. So here we've got 150. I'm going to pretend it's this line right here. So let's say that that is 150. Now you can see I've put an orange arrow. What we're doing is we're going to work backwards from 180 and find the angle that we create from the horizontal line. So really what we're doing is finding out the angle of this green stuff here that I've gone and colored in. So how big of an angle do you make if you move from 180 back to 150 degrees? 150 is right about here. Well, you can see it's going to be 30 degrees. If you take 180 and subtract 150, you get your 30 degrees. So once you've got that, you simply bounce over to these triangles and find out what is sine 30. So sine 30 is 1 over 2, and so we get our half. Now let's move across to sine 210. So sine 210 is going to be somewhere in this quadrant here. You can see we've got 90, 180. There's 270. We're not going that far. We're going to go to 210. It's about here on this line again. And once again, you want to use the orange line. So we're always going to work from the horizontal line and find out how big is the angle that you're creating when you move up or down from the horizontal line. So to get to 210, how many degrees do you need from 180? to get to that point. Once again, it's 30 degrees. So you can see whenever you use that 30 degrees, we're going to get these half values. But something happened with this half value. We've got sine 210 is a negative a half. Well, what's happening is if you remember these T's and these S's, what did T mean? It meant that tan was positive over here, but everything else is negative. So because we're using sine 210, what we had was a negative result. We got a half still, but it's a negative a half. If I'd given you tan 210, what you would have found is you had a positive result for this. It wouldn't have been the same value, but it would have been a positive answer. And lastly, let's have a look at sine 330. 330 is over here somewhere. You can see we're 30 degrees short of 360. So once again, you use that same triangle, 
there's 30 degrees there. Find the exact value of tan 135 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out where is 135 degrees. Here's 0, here's 90, here's 180. We don't go that far. So 135 is somewhere between 90 and 180. Now the next thing you need to ask yourself is how far back from the horizontal line do you need to move? How big is that angle going to be that hits the 135 degree point? Well, we've got 180. If you subtract 135 from 180, what you're going to get is 45 degrees. So we're going to be using a 45 degree angle. There's our 45 degree angle. So which triangle do you use? You can see we've got 45 degrees here and we're using tan of 45. So we've got opposite over adjacent. So tan of 135 is the same as using tan 45 there. We've got opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over 1 using 45 degrees right here. 1 over 1. And the last thing to ask yourself is, are we in a positive or negative quadrant for tan? We can see we've got the S there. That means that sine would be positive, but tan is going to be negative. So our answer is going to be negative 1 over 1, and we can also call that negative 1. So let's find the exact value of cos 330 degrees. Well, 330 is just past 270, but not as far as 360 degrees. So we can pretend that that line there represents our 330 degrees. Now what we've got is 30 degrees short of the horizontal line. So right there is 30 degrees, and you always work backwards from the horizontal line. So what we need to look at is 30 degrees over here, and we're going to find cos of 30 degrees. Now cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so you're going to find it's root 3 over 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. And the last thing to ask yourself is, will it be positive or negative? Well, we're in that fourth quadrant there, and cos is always positive in that fourth quadrant. So what we have is the right answer. Cos 330 is the square root of 3 over 2. Find the exact value of cos 420 degrees. Well, in this case, we've gone right around this diagram once. We've done one revolution. And how far past 360 did we go to hit 420? We're at 360. If you've done one revolution, we keep going past. And to get to 420 is going to be an additional 60 degrees. So you can think of cos 420 as this. It's cos 360 degrees plus another 60 degrees. That's 420. So we can ignore the first 360, we're back in that first quadrant once again, and we've gone 60 degrees past 360. So all we need to do is use 60 degrees here with cos. So it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. You're going to get yourself 1 over 2. And is it positive or negative? Well, we are in the A quadrant where everything is positive. So what we can do is leave that as it is. Cos 420 is 1 over 2. And we can also check that. If you enter cos 420 into a calculator, you should find you get 0 0.5. Find the exact value of tan negative 150. Well, in this case, all we need to do is work backwards. So here's 0. I'm going to work backwards till I get to this point here. And instead of 270, we can think of that as negative 90 degrees. And we have to go to negative 150. Now over here, I can assume that 180 is also negative 180, and we're going to work back until we hit negative 150. So let's place this point here as negative 150. Now when you're at this stage, how far from the horizontal line are we to hit negative 150? So once again, use the orange line. How many degrees exist between negative 180 and negative 150? 30 degrees. So what we're going to do is use 30 degrees over here. We can think of this as tan 30. So tan 30 is opposite over adjacent. So we've got 1 over root 3. And are we positive or negative? Well, we are in the third quadrant where tan is positive. So that's our answer. Tan negative 150 is equal to 1 over the square root of 3.